Well, hello everybody and welcome to a WordCast number 82. I have gotten that number right like six times in a row now, I think it is. I'm keep, trying to keep track of that, so it's important. Um, we've got a pretty massive, massive podcast for you guys today. There's uh, been a lot of news this week, which is in great contrast to our last week of <laughs> complaining yeah. about there not being enough news. So um, I guess we'll just kind of kind of jump into this here. So uh, well, I'll, I'll let you introduce yourself, sir. I'm Daniel. That's about oh, it. and I didn't really say that my name was Ethan, and today is September 17th, 2020 at 8.30 p.m., so uh, I wanted to make that sure. That is actually important. There's been so much news that knowing when to record this in case when something changes in probably an hour and a half. Yeah, know. yeah, there's, yeah, exactly. So 8.30 p.m. Pacific time, so, you know, when, um, a, you know, NVIDIA announces a, you know, a new type of airplane, um, it, sorry, it happened after the podcast, so. Yeah, and now if they announce one, you're going to seem like a genius. <sighs> seem like? Yeah, seem like. <laughs> Alrighty, well, I guess we can jump into this one here, and I'll, I'll let you take the lead here on this guy. Yeah, so um, we have talked before about how SoftBank was looking at selling <clears throat> ARM. And now we know the buyer. We've had rumors for a bit that it could be nvidia and nvidia has officially put out their press release they are going to attempt to buy arm for 40 billion dollars yeah so wild it's kind of crazy um it makes you wonder what's i mean it makes you wonder what's going to happen but you know really what what we need to be wondering about is like what chips are going to come out like i think there were some people that had worries about arm itself they are planning on completely keeping the like open licensing that ARM currently has. I think that's and then important. the other thing, so like the way that ARM works and the re like, so obviously NVIDIA buys them to make a profit. Um, the way that ARM works in for most companies, like with Qualcomm, for example, is that Qualcomm essentially buys like um, core designs from ARM. Right, and then makes their chips around the ARM cores. Um, obviously, NVIDIA is not going to want to give up Qualcomm as a customer. They are not going to change their licensing and fuck Qualcomm or MediaTek out of being customers. That 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 would defeat the purpose of buying ARM. Yeah, they'd like, start to lose money at that the, point. The AI stuff would is great and all, and it will probably still be profitable in the end. But like, there's no reason to give up a huge customer segment. There's no disadvantage to having them. Yeah, and initially this um, this huge focus that they have on AI is um probably going to the you know it cost them money if they got rid of other customers like it's it's something they're yeah, investing well, in. And it's like if you have the option of buying a company and it already has one very profitable division and you foresee a way to make another very profitable division, yeah. you wouldn't shut down the already very profitable division. You would just yeah. keep making profit. That way you can fund then, whatever you want to do. Yeah. Um, and then as far as Apple goes, as they're uh, in a more unique situation where they have and actually utilize the architectural license, I say that because Qualcomm does technically have the architectural license from my understanding, mm. but they don't do their own core designs. That's right. Yeah, because they're buying all the core designs. They don't even do any of their own, do they? I think they did a couple chips that were custom. They're probably not very good. I think they were fine. It just oh. it was it wasn't um, better enough that it was worth them doing that chip design in house. That's obviously a substantial task. Yeah, they absolutely. already have to design the rest of the chip. Yeah. Why design the cores if it's not going to be enough better that it, it makes sense? No, that the yeah, um, but Apple has an architectural license and they actually do completely make their own chips. Essentially, they're just using uh, ARM's version of a uh, the RISC instruction set. Right, right. And so I guess at this point, then NVIDIA stands to profit a lot from Apple. Maybe? I don't know how that deal works. So from my understanding, I, I think that the way it works is that Apple has already purchased the architectural license. So that is not an ongoing transaction. Now, they might oh. have to pay for updates to the instruction set. Um, but for the current ones they have, from my understanding they own but they might have to pay royalties still it just might be a fixed amount per that purchase agreement so in that case the entire reason 
that Leather Jacket Jensen bought Arm was because he wanted to force Apple to give them money because Apple refuses to buy NVIDIA products. <laughs> it's it's his way of getting Apple as a customer. Yeah, yeah. He was like, okay, yeah. we'll just buy something you rely on. Yep. No, that, I, it's um, interesting. I'm excited to see what comes from it. I mean, I guess we're speculating desktop CPUs potentially. I really hope so. In like, I mean, that would obviously be a ways out. Well, yeah, because um, Windows isn't there, and NVIDIA's primary well, customer base. Even if Windows. it was, even if it was, it yeah. Would be, well, yeah. There's a lot of you know work yeah. to do to make an actual um, high performance desktop chip. It's gonna, you know, like ARM is mobile specific, but it it, it yeah. does make me question if that's something that they might try and do. I mean, I would even love to see they, another player. Yeah, I would too. Um, even if they don't get there, at least in the next five or ten years. They reasonably could probably start putting out laptop chips relatively quickly, you know, two, three years, because ARM already has chips, you know, NVIDIA already has experience making higher end ARM chips. They do, um, yeah, for some of the Qualcomm tablets. Qualcomm has been working with Windows so, to try and improve that experience. So there's all these different spots where they would already be like part way along in the process. Because mm -hmm. remember, they've already made x86. NVIDIA has already made x86 ARM chips before this acquisition. Yeah, yeah, no, they, they did, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, ones that followed the x86 instruction set, they weren't. Yeah. X80, they are emulation still at that point. But, um, you know, it just, I don't know, it makes me wonder, like, if we start to see a bigger push for that, like, you know, what, what direction is Windows going to go? And, you know, I guess my personal speculation is that, um, you know, Windows itself has always been the platform that, you know, it may not be the most stable, it may not be the most secure, but it works on everything, and it works pretty well on everything, uh, assuming you have enough RAM. <laughs> uh, and so, like, I wonder if we're going to see a direction where Windows will just kind of seamlessly work on ARM or x86. Um, and in that event, like, how are x86-exclusive apps that are only compiled for x86 going to work? Or are we going to see most developers make two versions of the apps, you know? I mean, some applications that require a lot of the instructions that x86 has that ARM doesn't since it's a, um, you know, limited instruction set architecture, um, you know, some applications might just not be viable on ARM or the performance might be lower and they'll never make an ARM Here's version. Here's what I think could happen. So realistically, I don't foresee Windows on ARM ever doing well without something akin to what Apple is doing as far as a translation layer. Where it happens at the at the install point. Yes. Um, well, I I like how Apple's does it. Where depending on the application, it'll either do it at install or at run. Yeah. Depending on um uh, whatever their scenarios. Are. But they'll need like a quality translation layer. It it has to be really good for this to be viable. Right. And right Nvidia, now it's just it's emulation. Well, it's not let great. me finish what I'm saying. So Nvidia now has a reason. They have every reason now to make that translation layer themselves for windows or at least help significantly nvidia also happens to be one of the best seemingly at making tools to make it easy to develop and to port things to arm based on the switch yeah so you already have a company that has expertise in making things that were originally made for x86 ultimately get going easy relatively speaking on arm they so they already have some significant understanding of that process now they own arm so they stand to profit off of every single arm chip from every company if windows is on arm yeah so they might be the ones to go in and say okay we're going to partner with you microsoft and we're going to make this the best thing it can be because we'll make money off of literally every chip that utilizes this that's a good point um you know and if they start heading in that direction i'm scared for intel yeah that is the specific reason that nvidia being such a big company and buying this mm -hmm. makes me more okay in general like outside of apple who i just don't think would have fucked with arm at all nvidia is probably the one that I wanted to buy. I, in fact, NVIDIA is the one I wanted to buy it the most of all the big companies because they're the only ones I feel like are already experienced enough 
with ARM and would actually want to support Windows and other things. Whereas, like, if Apple bought it, they would either completely leave it alone or they would yeah add stuff to it, but only the stuff that benefits them. Right, right. And um, NVIDIA is going to be more open. Yeah, I foresaw if Apple bought it, it would be more of a protection move rather than like an offensive move. Um, whereas I think NVIDIA stands to be more on the offensive and make plays, not necessarily changes to how ARM operates, but make other plays to make sure they can profit off of ARM the most. And I think Windows is the area for the biggest growth there right now. Yeah. So oh, by far. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I guess, yeah, I mean, it's definitely the area for the biggest growth. I mean, yeah. Linux even if they server? can just take a, yeah, even if uh, NVIDIA and ARM could take 10, 15% of the laptop market, that would be massive amounts of money. Yeah. And finally bring a level of competition that we haven't seen in a long time. <laughs> um, you know, and, and I, and I, I feel like, you know, uh, and I've said this before in previous podcasts with AMD and Intel is um, as we're getting more competition kind of coming up here for a lot of different types of chip manufacturing, I feel like we have, uh, uh, consumers have a choice, but it's not like, it's not akin to the choice we had, you know, 30 years ago. It's a choice of what type of product you want rather than just a choice of, you know, who's the best, um, you know, at, at you know, overall, right? You know, it's, it's kind of like, you know, if, if you're picking a laptop, you know, say five years from now when we have ARM-based laptops and we still have Intel and AMD-based laptops, right? Like, then you have to start to question, like, what matters to what you're doing? And it's kind of mm -hmm. cool to see a, a more, you know, something that's more specific, uh, more focused in terms of what it's capable of doing, right? Like, you know, you choose ARM if you want something that's got better battery life and uh, you, you choose, um, you know, AMD if you want something that can do high-performance tasks and... You choose Intel if you're stupid. So <laughs> it seems like a pretty interesting market to be in. Yeah. And then like, you know, the, we've talked about this with Apple and their architecture, but I'm much more interested in it from NVIDIA's perspective now of this idea of um, what can ARM be pushed to? Like mm -hmm. what can it really do? We've only really seen it focused on outside of servers, which we, you know, only few and far between right now. Um, well, there's a lot like, of ARM servers, but they're not uh, you know, uh, high performance ones, I should say. Well, yeah, even then, there's a lot there, of high performance a, ones, but I, they're just it's it's a matter of like they're high performance because there's so many chips because it's cheap, rather yeah. than high performance, you know, with a smaller number of chips running at higher clocks and um, yeah, and, and that's it's like you know interesting. What could we see Nvidia do with like a you know Nvidia's like CUDA cores and whatever they can do with ARM on, like, a desktop class chip. Yeah. Like, could they make something that is, you know, for the price at least, competitive with um, AMD or Intel? Because, mm -hmm. like, that would be really cool if we could have something compete with, like, the higher end. Rather than just... AMD or Intel yeah. while still being on ARM. Rather than it just being like, oh, ARM is just the efficiency thing. Like, obviously, that's what it's been focused on. Yeah, yeah. And it's I guess... always going to have some advantages there because of its instruction set. But, like, what could it be pushed to is essentially all I'm Yeah, at. yeah. Well, I mean, with the right development work done, you know, right? And, like, that that's where you start. I guess that's what I meant by having this choice, right, though, is where you also, you know, you know risk computing is very different from x86 computing. And um, it's it's interesting to have those as options, right? Where you have an option of choosing something that can do everything, or you have an option that can do certain things really well. And so it's just a matter of like, okay, x86 might be the choice if you have a huge variety of things that you need to do at high performance, uh, but you're gonna pay more for it and you're gonna get worse, worse efficiency, or you go the ARM direction, but like, you know, with the hope being of course that, you know, it can do a lot of things really well it just isn't as branched as x86 because it, it just it never will be um yeah but like and gaming, it'll really right? depend on what tasks if it can do really well at gaming when it's you mm -hmm. know really pushed to the limits if it's like if it can do gaming we already know it can do things like video editing based on how well the ipad can edit without a fucking fan yeah um and so it's like if you can do those things then it's like does it just become competition around risk chips in a while for like the consumer space i don't know if it'll head in that direction just because you know like 
I think what we would end up seeing is like, oh yeah, you know, X video editor is really good on ARM, but if you prefer a different editor, it's better on x86. And um, the I, I agree and disagree though, because like there's not many of the like high-end editors that are exclusive to Windows. And so unless they decide to drop Mac support, they're already going to be built and probably optimized for Apple Silicon. That's at least true. pretty well. And a lot maybe of them they are be, pushing more GPU anyway. Yeah, maybe they won't be the like absolute you know, as good on there, but I imagine they're going to have a decent amount of time put into optimization just because Apple's also doing it. Right, right. I guess what I was getting at, though, is like, you know, if you're a video, I, I guess a better example is like, if you're a video editor and the video editing platforms work good on ARM, then you get lower price, more efficient and better performance or similar performance, um, yeah. you know, but if you're that guy that, you know, you have every fucking creative app on your computer that exists and every programming language on your computer that exists and every compiler, um, you know, you, and you, you know, you, you do JavaScript and you do Python and everything like it may end up being in a direction where it just, it depends on what you're doing with your machine, what chips makes the most sense for you. Yeah. Um, what I would like to see though, is I don't want to see arm desktop or laptops become more popular and have these like hardcore limits on what you like what applications work. So I do think you're right that a translation layer is really important. It, it, it's oh, not yeah. like- I don't think, I don't think Windows can get the app support for ARM ever, no matter what, without that translation layer. Uh, agreed, yeah, it's just they, they, they can't. Yeah, Apple can move markets better than Windows can. Mm -hmm. And so it's like Apple saying, we are switching to ARM. Like the only way Windows could convince devs to start making them is if they said, we're dropping x86 support, which is obviously not going to happen. Right, I mean, that um, kind of defeats the purpose of Windows as a platform anyway. Yeah, it's like, I just, until there is the market share on Windows, I don't see how they're going to convince a lot of developers to take the time to make their app for ARM. Yeah, it's kind of a catch-22 or, or chicken and egg kind of thing, yeah, yeah. where it's, um, yeah. Especially since Apple Silicon is so custom and is so unique. Um, you know, it's nothing like a lot of the ARM chips that we see on Android. And so it's noth It's also nothing like the ARM chips that will be for Windows. So how much of those apps will easily translate? Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're making something more intensive, yeah, you might learn how to optimize for ARM better by making for um, Mac. But it's not like you can necessarily copy paste that code because Apple Silicon is not just x80 or is not just arm chips it's arm chips plus the machine learning thing plus the uh tensor cores plus the you know um video encoder all these different small little things on the chip right right and then th those are things yeah no that, that's a good Whereas point and i think qualcomm it's mostly just your cores your gpu and maybe tensor cores depending on the unit yeah yeah and even then we haven't seen a big like we haven't seen that many of those so I don't know. It'll be it'll be interesting. I do think I, I very much so agree that a translation layer is the only way to make this work good. And um, yeah, you know, like like I don't want to be going out there trying to put seven zip on an ARM based laptop and having it be super slow to unzip a, you know, half gig file. Like it's got you know it's it, it, it's got to still be able to do stuff, you know, like it's got to still be able to install and do everything that Windows does. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, and then I am really excited to see what NVIDIA can do with AI and ARM because, like, they have been pushing AI stuff really hard. They've been already. one of the biggest pushers for it. Yeah, and so that should be interesting. Um, and I think that's why... So, as I mentioned when I was saying this, I said attempted, attempting to buy. Yeah. Obviously, it still has to get through government approval. Um I feel like they have an advantage in getting the U.S. government to approve them right now because, and this goes into the AI thing, China, their state media has called this merger disturbing. China is probably ahead of us in AI right now. Like, realistically, the U.S. is probably losing. Um, this would be it's huge. not the only thing we're losing it. <laughs> yeah. This would be huge, though, for essentially the whole Western world and AI, yeah. um, China definitely doesn't want this because it would hurt their leadership position. 
that's also a good point and that's that's incentive for this to go through and actually become a thing um and then yeah um one other thing that i wanted to add as well this is just something i don't know if this is normal for deals it's not from what I, I mean i haven't seen this mentioned before but in their press release nvidia mentioned that they will also issue 1.5 billion in equity to arm employees wow that's nice yeah that's another incentive well i, I guess my personal opinion is i kind of hope it goes through yeah I mean, I don't usually like mergers and buyouts, but I hope this goes through. Yeah, like my my overall top, like Nvidia is my top choice for companies that could buy it. I would prefer it just spin off to be its own company. Yeah, I mean, I think that would be a good a good solution as well. It would uh, it that would be better for competition. But but I get why it's not happening because the whole reason that they're leaving SoftBank is SoftBank need money. Yeah, yeah, and uh. 40 billion is a lot of money it's a pretty good chunk there from a company that can afford it yeah you know it's not a lot of money well it is to some people uh especially right now but but, but it's a good value yes <laughs> except right now is the rtx 3080 and you know th this was an interesting one to me um you know so we, we've got some review recaps here but i actually before i jumped into the review recap uh i, I wanted to talk about this uh this not paper launch, not paper launch at all. Um, so this morning, I had no intention of buying a 3080. Uh, I'm, I'm planning to get a 3090 on launch, but I'm scared now. Um, so this morning, though, I was get, like watching the sales just because I was interested to see, you know, how quick it sold out. Hopefully, getting an idea of what the 3090 launch might be like. And um, I'm not, I'm not excited. I'm scared because it sold out from most companies in just a few seconds. Um, yeah which was really unfortunate and Newegg seems to have it for like 12 minutes ish but they only had one card in stock at that point i don't know if it was something that they restocked um or if it was just a card that nobody wanted and they have more of them or something i'm not sure but yeah according to nvidia um them and their partners are shipping more cards to retailers every single day oh well that's good that's good potentially so good news then i don't know then. how the who knows now if you know let's say newegg allocated their pre-orders for day one for like the first week of shipments or if that was for just day right one, like if they oversold orders. yeah yeah but it, but it also um, makes me wonder if they're shipping more 3080s over there might be 3090s in that pile too and so maybe the stock of 3090s is gonna be better i just i gotta hope in every way that i can to try and get one of these gpus that i've been waiting you know like three up. years for i'm just like yeah. Um, oh, also, something interesting that NVIDIA specifically is doing um, because of this, uh, they are manually reviewing orders to make sure that the customers that bought them are actual customers and not bots or Good. potentially scalpers. If they can find any evidence that they're a scalper, they're shutting down the order. Wow. Good. Yeah, because I hate that. Cause like on eBay right now, like let me just let me just pull it up because it's changing by the hour. Let's see if there's any uh, RTX 3080s available right now. Let's see here. All right, let's see. Uh, here's a Zotac Gaming RTX 3080 for twelve hundred dollars. Here is a um, Nvidia Founders Edition that that is literally just a picture of the confirmed Nvidia order for seventeen hundred dollars. Yeah, like. Oh, oh! Here's somebody selling an Nvidia GeForce RTX 3080 thank you card, not an actual GPU, for five hundred dollars. <laughs> wow! A GeForce RTX 3080 Founders Edition, Paper Edition, six hundred dollars, because they're hoping people just grab it, like it's a picture of the. Oh my goodness. Here's one though, a MSI RTX 3080 for thirteen hundred dollars. You guys get the point of this. Like, like this is this is just ridiculous. You see these these price these these people that just take it and resell it for such a high value is absolutely ridiculous, and it sucks. And I'm not gonna pay six thousand dollars for a 3090. So I hope I can get one on launch at actual yeah, normal see, price. What you guys need to do is what the PlayStation fan base did, of starting to put in fake bids. So like on the ones that are. Like most of the PS5s for sale are like best offer, uh -huh. um, or 
set price, so they just show the set price when you're looking. Yeah. Um, but there's a few that are bid only, and people have been putting fake bids in. So like one of them is at ten thousand dollars. <laughs> I saw that was the funniest thing. Oh yeah. man, it's crazy. But um, you know, I yeah, guess what? Talk about the chips though. Like how how good? Yeah, are they? yeah. So I guess this will give you an indication of why people want them so bad. So the thirty eighty is actually impressive. Now it's not. It's not as impressive as we'd hoped. It is not a doubling in performance on a lot of things. But, uh, you know, we're seeing... Well, a... the, these numbers are compared to the 2080 Super, which was better than the 2080. No, this is true, but even then, they were I not double. I don't expect double. it to be a full doubling, no. Yeah, but... no, it, in fact, it was it was more common, like, 30 per... 30 to... to I think, well, no, it was, so it was commonly, like, 30% over the 2080 Ti, and it was commonly, like closer to 50 to 70 percent over the 2080 super now I'll, I'll go over the numbers here for you guys so <clears throat> these are all based on gamers nexus um and so i want to give full credit to them i want to say they did this this is these are not my numbers these are directly from what they had on their article which will be linked in the description these guys do fantastic work i chose their numbers because i trust their numbers more than anybody else's out there period um and so i just wanted to put full disclosure there if you guys haven't heard of them you probably have if you're watching this channel but if you haven't heard of gamers nexus Jump over there, check out their place, buy shit from their store. They're awesome guys. Um, but anyway, jumping into the performance. So Red Dead Redemption 2 at 4K. And in fact, all these games here are 4K. Uh, on the 2080 Super was running at 53.8 FPS. And on the 2080 Ti was running at 72.3 FPS. And the 3080 is running at 85.1 FPS. So again, you're looking at... 2080 Ti, 1500 I like to say that because a lot of the AIB ones were thirteen to $1,500 card going up against a, is it $700 card? Now I'm losing my train of thought. Is it $699? $699, yeah. So $700 to, you know, maybe like $800 for some of the AIB models. Um, so that's already like a great value. But I also want to emphasize something here. This was in comparison to... AIB 2080 Ti and 2080 Supers, not Founders Edition. And while the Founders Edition from the 20 series was good, these AIB cards commonly cool better and also sometimes are binned better and they're sometimes push their clocks a little higher. Um, so I want to make that clear that, you know, you might even see another 5% gap if you were comparing this directly to other Founders Edition cards. Yeah. Um, so Rainbow Six Siege, again, 4K. 2080 Super was 101 FPS, 2080 Ti was 160.7 FPS, and the 3080 was 178.7 FPS. I so, would take 78-ish percent better. It's a pretty big deal, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. And and again, even over the 2080 Ti, you know, you're still looking at almost 20 frames per second on top of that. Shadow of the yeah. Tomb Raider at 4K, 2080 Super, 59.9 FPS, 2080 Ti, 73.7 FPS, and 3080 was 92.2 FPS. Uh, i got two more to get here. One of them is really important. So we also have Grand Theft Auto V, still a pretty good game to benchmark. 2080 Super was at 65.8 FPS, 2080 Ti was at 79.1, and the 3080 was at 95.5. That's, again, it's, you know, it's 15 frames on top of the 2080 Ti. For what is a, you know effectively half the price that's pretty impressive um now another fun one to look at though is the rtx performance so running minecraft windows edition uh, you know bedrock edition I, I think is the correct version um yes. at 4k with rtx on which is full ray trace global illumination for those that haven't seen it is not just ray trace reflections uh and dlss on uh i didn't find numbers for dlss off for Minecraft, but uh, 2080 Super, 50.4 FPS, 2080 Ti, 64.5 FPS, 3080, 87.4 FPS, <laughs> healthily breaching that 75 hertz mark if you're one of the people with that middle ground monitors like me that came out before you could really get 100 hertz for cheap. Um, so like that is really awesome to see. So we are seeing a significant bump in ray tracing performance, which we expected. Now, uh, you know, it, it's I'm excited to see what the 3090 can do. This is really kind of like in my head, like, oh my goodness, I can't wait to see what that card can do. I just, I hope I can get one. I hope I can bring you guys some of our own numbers, uh, even if they're just rough numbers, you know. Uh, again, I, I choose Gamers Nexus because their numbers are going to be more accurate than anybody else's. But, um, you know, I'd still love to do a mini review of, of a 3090. <laughs> 
Yeah. So we'll just don't fail at buying one. I'm gonna try really hard, man. I'm I'm getting up extra early so I can be completely like like ready to leave the house for work so that I can sit there on the computer at six AM refreshing, <laughs> hoping to find one to buy. And if I don't get one, I'm gonna do what I did with the thirty nine seventy X. As soon as I get to work, I'm gonna be there looking at the page all day long, seeing mm -hmm. if I can get one. Because the thirty nine seventy X came back in stock like four hours later. So Yeah, um, didn't I send you the link when it restocked? I think, uh, yeah, I think you did. Yeah, or yeah. no, no, I think, I think, uh, I think you did and Newake emailed me at the same time. And I was yeah. like, no, really? And I was so happy because I opened it fully expecting to see out of stock and it was there and it added, yeah. it went in my cart and I, I bought it and I had it three days after launch or two days after launch. Um, you know, I, I, I paid for the fastest shipping, so maybe I got it the day after launch. I can't remember, but man, it was, it was exciting. And I hope I can do the same for the 3090 here because I've been waiting for so long to upgrade the 1080 Ti's in here. And yeah, it'd just be nice. I mean, not that these are a slouch, but they, I mean, a lot of games I am having to run down to like medium or even low settings sometimes to get the higher frame rates that I'm looking for at this resolution. Now, yeah. the last thing I want to talk about about the card, like benchmarks and stuff specifically, is this again is from Gamers Nexus, is uh, power usage. And the, the 3090 is going to be power hungry because the 3080 is already pretty power hungry. So uh, the power usage for just the card, 235.4 watts. Stock Founders Edition. So that's going to be really interesting uh, when we see the 3090 out because that is already pretty, pretty hefty power consumption there. You know, you could see a single system pulling 600, mm -hmm. 700 watts with one of these and a, a beefy CPU and, you know, some drives and stuff like that. So pretty crazy, honestly. Yeah. Um, but I don't really have much to add about the power usage. Are you, th are you GPUs. thinking about trying to get a 3000 card this year? All day Probably maybe not. or something? No, I'm spending too much money. You like? Yeah, I, I get you. And you like your 2070, I presume, still. Yeah, I mean, I don't really like. I mean, the game I spend the most time playing on my PC is RuneScape. That yeah. will change temporarily for Cyberpunk. Mm -hmm. But I just don't know if upgrading a GPU just for Cyberpunk is worth it. No, I think you're right about that. And I mean, if your main games are not games that are gpu intensive like like you know my main games are like you know warframe not crazy gpu intensive but it, it's it's in that realm but then like doom you know can really use it um and uh, obviously cyberpunk mm -hmm. lead dangerous stuff like that right but like also i play runescape with you a lot and it's like it'd be funny to buy a new gpu and mostly yeah. play runescape yeah um and then the other thing is like since i am getting a playstation 5 yeah um like, I'm obviously going to be trying to play some games on that, um, especially Spider-Man at launch. And then, you know, presumably early next year I'm, is when I'm guessing Horizon's coming out. We could talk about that later. But it's like there's going to be a steady flow of games for that. So finding um, time for graphic intensive games on PC is not going to Yeah, and it's like I'm just going to play, you know, whatever, wherever for right now. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah. And then because like... Let's be real. Also, the PS5 is probably not that much worse than a 2070. That's also true. Yeah, that's also a good point. Uh, and so, it's probably going to be better at ray tracing. <laughs> maybe. maybe. I yeah. Mean, we'll talk about ray tracing when we get to the. We definitely stuff. will. Yeah. And for those watching the part, you should totally go watch the full podcast. Or at least, if you don't care about Apple, jump to our PlayStation part, which will be out like two days after this one. Yeah. But um, the last thing I want to say before we do transition into Apple, um, well, actually, I lost my train of thought about that one. I'm proud of myself. Good job. Oh, um, the other thing to mention about NVIDIA is that uh, the RTX broadcast app is out now. Oh, oh, cool. Okay, yeah, I'm going to so want to test that. I haven't messed with it yet, but yeah, okay. you, I mean, you ha you'll have to on your guest rig. Well, I mean, or if I can hopefully have a 3090 in a week. That's true. That would be that would be really nice. Uh, you know, I got yeah. other stuff to do before I'd have a chance to test it on the twenty sixty. But um, what you should do if you do get the thirty ninety uh -huh. is the podcast that we record whenever you get the thirty ninety, whether it's next week or if it's a month from now or whatever. Mm -hmm. You should like essentially remove your chair from the scene, take a picture, and then use the RTX broadcast to do the green screen thing yeah. and see if see how many people notice it 
Yeah, I think it's a good idea. I yeah. like that. I think that's a very good idea. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny too. I dig it. Yeah. I, I want I want I'm excited. I'm really excited for this launch and let's let's just hope that Nvidia can keep up with stock to some realistic level. That's funny. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know. I mean they're so good and people have been like so many people are like, ah, I'm skipping the twenty series. Like the twenty series did not sell well. That even if they have good stock, man, this is just poof, all gone. Yeah. yeah. So Alrighty, well, I think that's um